Hey guys, Matthew here. So today we'll be going over the fifth installment of the How to Act series, which will be going over Act 5. For the most part, Act 5 has very static-ish layouts that are pretty damn easy once you know uh, basically where you're going. Uh, so you start off in Slave Pens. Slave Pens, for the most part, is basically you want to follow the, the road and head on uh, as low as you can. Always uh, go lower. And then whenever you can not go lower anymore, you'll want to head to the left. So it's going to look a little bit something like, like this, I guess. So we go down, we go down, we go down. Oh, can't go down anymore. We head le uh, right because we don't have any other choice. And we go down and then we head left because we can't go anywhere else. And the boss is here. Uh, I don't know where he is. Yo, dude. Give me attention, brother. So that's going to be for uh, Slave Pens. It's pretty much always the exact same layout. It might not always be the exact exact same, but the waypoint is always going to be here, and the boss is always going to be there. So you just basically beeline from the waypoint to the boss, always head down. Whenever you can't, you go left, and that will lead you uh, to the boss basically every time. So afterwards, you'll be adding into the control blocks. Uh, the control blocks can actually be uh, very confusing for a lot of players but I'll be showing you that it's it's actually really not that bad so for the control blocks you'll be heading uh, downwards for the most part until you find um, um, the mice meter that being said the control blocks all these little ledges here that have like gaps in the fences you can actually just go straight over uh, which makes running this a whole lot easier so the mice meter would be here which is always going to be in the same place. Like I said, you go down, you head to this, to the as as low as you can. When you can't go lower anymore, you're going to head left, uh, jump over the ledge, follow a straight line, and that will lead you to the minus meter. From here on, it's kind of going to be the same. You'll head as straight as you can until you hit a wall. Once you can no longer go up, you'll go right side. You can jump over that. Head over here. Follow the. Uh, uh, follow the uh, the layout, and all of a sudden, boom, the boss. Pretty damn easy, wasn't it? So the control blocks might seem like a goddamn dungeon to some of you guys, but it's really no more than just this. Every single time, the layout's going to be the exact same. It follows the same rules. Uh, and even, like, a corrupted zone will not really affect it. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, from here on out, we'll just head basically, um, we'll head up, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we'll head up and uh, find the little uh, gates to the uh, rune square, I believe. Or no, wait, it's not the rune square at that point. I actually don't have access to it since I've already completed it, which is kind of troll. Um, can I actually go from here? I cannot. That is a little bit annoying. So I don't have access to the uh, the place after the control blocks. But for the most part, that layout is very linear. It just does like a... It's kind of like the city square map, basically. You'll head in, you'll have your waypoint, then you'll go left a little bit until you hit a bridge, then go across the bridge, head up until you hit a wall, which is going to be way later, then go right, and that will lead you to the uh, next zone, uh, for the most part, anyways. Uh, so once you've done that, you'll be basically in the rune square. I'll go ahead and uh, go where the spawn point is, I believe. It's over here, I think, somewhere. Okay, so the torch courts, yeah, right. This is uh, one of the ones that we weren't able to actually go into. Well, the torch courts, for the most part, which will not be torched at first, is basically uh, a square. Pretty much just a square. So you want to follow on the edges, uh, and whenever you go, and whenever you, you hit a wall, then you want to take another turn, right? So, for example, uh, it's probably going to be over here. Over here, right? Okay, so Chamber of Innocence. It's kind of troll having to run this like basically the opposite of what you normally would. Um, but typically, normally, you'd be coming into the Chamber of Innocence uh, before killing Innocence, basically. This would be where you'd actually start. Whenever I said, like, after the, the initial place, you'll be uh, going into a zone, then I explained the layout for that zone. Well, afterwards, basically, that that will lead you into this place. Uh, this place, for the most part, is basically a, 
the same, the exact same every single time. So we'll go ahead and kill the monsters, so we're going to have some silence. Alright, cool. Uh, Sanctum of Innocence, this is where you fight the boss. I don't really want to do this. Okay, so, let's go over this real quick. Ah, these monsters are annoying. Okay, so, normally, you won't really start here. This is going to be the ending point. You'll actually start, well, actually, you'll kind of start here anyways, because the layout is kind of basically the exact same both times, but... To get to Innocence, you'll basically be in a layout that is exactly this, for the most part. Like, you'll come in, uh, you'll have uh, your little waypoint, then you have to head all the way to Innocence. To make your way to Innocence, basically, uh, it's going to be the exact same every single time. Uh, you can decide to go in the inner, like I did here, or the outer side. Uh, both will work. The outer side is better for XP, while the inner side is obviously faster. Uh, for the most part, though, you want to follow along uh, the layout. It only goes one way. So no matter if you go the, in the inside or the outside, it will lead you to the Chamber of Innocence. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take care of this real quick. Oh, actually, that's, that's going to take forever, isn't it? Because of the phases and stuff. Oh, man. That's not fun. Either way, guess we'll just go ahead and do it. We don't really have a choice, do we? Well, yeah, this is not very fun, but oh well. What can you do, right? It'd be pretty nice if I could just literally just kill him fast enough for him to not go through his phases, but I'm not sure if you can do that. I wonder if he could kill me. Maybe he can. I have very low a very low amount of life. Okay, so this should be like the last phase. Then I should be able to kill him, I guess. Hopefully. Because this is not very fun. Alright. Come on, dude. Die. Trying to do something here. Oh, another phase. Can you just shut up about being the Emperor, dude? Nobody likes you, Innocence. You're ugly. Now, he's actually a pretty handsome, man. Let's be real. Look at that. Look at that face. Pretty handsome. Doesn't really have any facial expression, though, but, you know. Still pretty handsome, I'd say. Alright, once you've killed him, you'll be able to go to the Chamber of Innocence, which is where we actually uh, started off, because, well... I wasn't able to go back to the actual initial area, but believe me when I say the layout is the exact same. So, after you've beat Innocence, you'll head over to the Torch Coats, which we actually already did. Um, and the layout is always going to be just like this. You'll go in a, a counterclockwise manner, basically, and always try to like hug the walls. Uh, hug the walls in a counterclockwise manner. Uh, counterclockwise manner and that will lead you to the exit every single time trust me on that there's no real dead ends here there, you, you could hit a wall here but like I said say if you hit this wall here while hugging the walls well just keep hugging the wall and it will lead you here here so on so forth and in the end you reach uh, you'll reach the uh, the exit really really quickly uh, before heading, before you actually go to the torch courts, you'll be in the courts, you know, before this whole thing is destroyed, before killing innocents. Uh, and the layout in, th in that place will be the exact opposite. So instead of going in a counterclockwise manner, uh, around here, you go in a clockwise manner, basically, around here. Because, in the end, you're basically doing the exact opposite of what you did, well, no, not really, you're doing the exact same thing, but on the way back... Uh, right now than you did earlier uh, so that may sound uh, like a little bit confusing I guess but for the most part both this layout and the other layout of the courts room or whatever it's called uh, will follow the rule like I said just follow along the the edges of the wall and that will lead you to the exit so let's just go ahead and run it 
get out of here so I can uh, keep going with this video. Because uh, I hadn't really expected the fact that Act 5 would not let me go through the other zones uh, once you've completed them, which is actually a little bit annoying because now I can't actually uh, just run the layout or the zone or the act like I normally would for my videos. Oh well though. Uh, as for the rune square, it's pretty much a static layout. It's going to be the exact same every time. So you do this little uh, zigzag thing and you'll head it over to the waypoint. Uh, from the waypoint, you'll want to head into the ossuary. Um, because you have a quest item here as well as a trial ascendancy, I believe. Uh, the ossuary, it's pretty simple. Like You just kind of want to follow along um, the uh, follow along the layout. It's going to lead you to the staff, I believe. Is it the staff of impurity in this layout? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, that'll lead you to the Staff of Impurity. It's basically like a circle. Just follow along the circle as close to you ca as you can to the walls, and that will lead you to the quest item. And boom, you're done with the ossuary. It takes something like th two minutes to run, not even. Uh, once you're done with uh, the ossuary... Yeah, that's not the one with the Trial of Ascendancy. That's way later. My bad. So once you're done with the ossuary, you'll want to basically hug this wall over here. The Hug the uh, left-hand side. Until you reach um, basically this, which will be where you'll go ahead and kill Kitava, which is the cathedral rooftop. Uh, once you reach this point, you'll want to put a portal down here, right here. And head into a diagonal line, bottom, and uh, just follow along until you hit a wall, and that will lead you to the reliquary. Or reliquary, or whatever, how you pronounce that. This you'll have to do because it'll give you the extra skill point. Uh, you'll want to grab this waypoint, pretty important. Uh, the reliquary you can ha you can run in one way or the other. Basically, the goal is to hit all the corners where the uh, skill I uh, quest items are going to be. Uh, having a movement skill here is pretty useful because you can actually. Uh, so this is what you'll be looking for. You can actually jump over most of these ledges actually. So let me just show you an example. Uh, so this would be the second part of the thing. Uh, so let's see. So some some movement skills like Blink Arrow would probably be able to actually do this jump. Uh, this movement skill cannot, unfortunately. But for the most part, you're able to jump over quite a bit of the quite a bit of these things, of these uh, ledges. And this would be the final piece. That moment, you don't want to log out. You basically want to head back to the um, to the waypoint, which will be basically in a straight line. Because like I said, it's a square. You just follow the outside uh, the outside the uh, layout of the square and that will lead you to all the, the the places required to go from here you head back to town and uh, take your portal which will lead you to uh, you know Kitava I didn't have a portal scroll because I'm a noob so I'll go ahead and go back to the rune square and uh, we can go uh, we can act as if I had a portal because I was smart and the portal would be right here, which means I'd be teleported right back in here. There is another quest in the Rune Square, which will be located around here, but it is completely useless. So I advise that you skip that one. Just do the ossuary, uh, because you have to, to get the uh, uh, the Kitava boss started. And uh, the reliquary for the skill point quest. And uh, for the most part, that's it for Act 5. You head over to the Catholic Rooftop which is a linear layout for the most part. There's quite a few dead ends, but it's not really a big of a deal. Uh, just head on to a, uh, a straight line, literally a straight line, and uh, that will lead you to the boss, which is going to be located right about here. Oh, a little bit further. There you go. And then you put on the Cradle of Purity, and uh, it's time to beat the big boy Kitava. Uh, tips for killing Kitava. I would say... Um, the most important thing, basically, is to not get hit. <laughs> it sounds a little bit troll, but just don't get hit is, uh, it's probably the most important part. Uh, try to stay away from these things, because these things hurt, like, a lot. Um, and then when he does this thing, it's gonna... It's going to do these like little circle on the ground, and you want to stay away from those as well. He slaps the ground a few times. Um... Those don't really matter. They're very telegraphed attacks. And with the upcoming 3.7 Legion, uh, they said they're going to remake like uh, how wind-up works for big, big attacks. So telegraphed attacks are going to be even more telegraphed. So you really shouldn't be getting hit. 
uh, by Kitaba. It's not a dangerous fight. The Act 10 Kitaba is like a whole different beast. Uh, but the Act Act 5 Kitaba is like really, really easy. So I'll go ahead and do this. The most annoying part is like the phases. It takes forever, I feel. Can you die already, dude? Alright, there it is. Oh no, Kitaba, big boy. Oh no. And then uh, he goes Super Saiyan. Power levels over 9,000, and he beats the fuck out of us with the fires. Well. Sin said it best. From here, obviously, you know, you want to head over to your waypoint in case you ever want to grab that. And you can just talk to Leader Roth and sell to Ray Class. And you're officially done with Act 5. So, um, this video honestly has gone for way longer than Act 5 actually takes uh, to run once you get accustomed to, uh, to the layouts. Because like I said, every layout is literally borderline static. It's super fast to get through Act 5. Now, how long does it actually take to get through Act 5? Uh, through Act five? Uh, under 20 minutes. Doing the entire thing takes under 20 minutes. Uh, with a, well, Obviously, with a quick build, with a good build. Uh, with a lot of damage. Uh, but for the most part, once you know the layouts, it's, it's like a brain-dead act. It feels like they were just running out of ideas and like, you know what, we're just going to make Act 5 like... We're going to basically put like three seeds for each layout. And uh, every seed is basically going to be the exact same except a few things are going to change. But for the most part, all the entrance and exits are literally in the exact same place. Uh, I'm not bashing on GGG. I think Act 5 is a great act. I like the idea of like doing the whole thing and doing it backwards. All that good stuff. I think the Act 5 to 10 are actually really, really fun. Uh, but despite the fact that they're fun... They're actually super, super, super easy, and basically just a washed out Act 1 to, you know, 4. Uh, so getting through with them is incredibly easy, uh, which, you know, we'll be doing uh, in later videos. So hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned a little something. Uh, don't be scared of, you know, that um, control blocks layout. It's super, super simple once you know how to get through it. Uh, so that's going to be Matthew signing out on the next one. Peace.